in Georgia and East Alabama, this is News 3 Night Watch. 50 years later, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy is being relived by those who can remember that tragic day. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Teresa Whitaker. The emotions of the country were thrown into a whirlwind of grief and disbelief on that November day back in 1963. Veteran CBS newsman Bob Schieffer was a young newspaper reporter in Fort Worth, Texas at the time. News 3's Phil Scoggins sat down with Schieffer to recall how the events of that fateful day affected the country and his career. The CBS News Bureau here in Washington, D.C. is where Bob Schieffer hosts the long-running public affairs program, Face the Nation. And when our nation faced one of its most tragic moments in history, Bob Schieffer was there. This thing first hit, we didn't know if it was the beginning of World War III. Looks like the president has been hit. Help, but stand by. Temple Parkland has been notified. I think the first thing that ran through people's minds, I mean, it was terror. We, we just didn't know what had happened. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. On the afternoon of November 22, 1963, Bob Schieffer was in bed asleep. He'd worked the all-night shift as a police reporter for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. When he came over the radio that this trouble had erupted, my brother uh, ran in and woke me up and said, you better get up, apparently the president's been shot. I got to the city room, it was total chaos. They had sent most every reporter that worked there to Dallas. The phone rings, I pick it up, and a woman says, is there anybody there who can give me a ride to Dallas? And I said, well, ma'am, you know, we don't run a taxi service here, and besides, the president's been shot. And she said, yes, I just heard it on the radio. I, uh, I think my son is the one they've arrested. And it was Lee Harvey Oswald's mother. Schieffer told her not to answer any more phone calls. He'd be right there to pick her up. At the address that this woman had given us, there stood this little gray-haired woman in a white practical nurse's uniform carrying a little blue travel bag. And uh, she got in the back seat with me and we drove her to Dallas. Schieffer says what she talked about on the way was strange. The president had been dead only hours and she was already speculating about uh, would people give his wife money? Uh, her son's wife money and that no one would remember her and she'd probably starve to death because she'd never get another job. It was the most bizarre conversation I've ever I've, I've ever had with anyone. Schieffer says Marguerite Oswald never told him whether she thought her son killed President Kennedy when they arrived in Dallas. So we were ushered into this holding room off the jail and uh, standing there and I'm thinking my heavens I mean you know I'm gonna if I don't get to interview this guy, I'm going to hear what he talks to his mother about. I mean, this was the biggest story I'd ever been involved in. But his near rendezvous with Lee Harvey Oswald never materialized. Finally, a guy standing over in the corner said, well, who are you? And I said, uh, what? And he said, are you a reporter? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, son, he said, you get out of here. Because he said, if I ever see you again, I'm going to kill you. And. <laughs> He was so mad. I think he might have. <laughs> Schieffer's story about his encounter with Mrs. Oswald was part of the Star-Telegram's early coverage of the assassination. Bob says he and CBS colleague Walter Cronkite talked about the Kennedy assassination many, many times. The way Walter handled that, uh, I mean, that's what Walter was so good at, you know. I mean, he, he almost lost it there at one point. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital. There's nothing sensational. There was nothing, uh, I mean, Walter worked through that story just like you would work through any story. The way he handled that with, with this, this dignity, uh, I think that's, those were the qualities that uh, made, made Walter Walter. The Warren Commission found that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in the assassination of President Kennedy. I asked Schieffer his opinion. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the Warren Commission got it right. 
but I still have an open mind about that. Maybe someday we'll find the evidence that convinces us that uh, somebody else was involved. At this point, I haven't seen that. Have you ever pondered what would be different about America had Kennedy not been assassinated that day? Uh, you know, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I'm not sure that Jack Kennedy could have passed the civil rights legislation that Lyndon Johnson did. Uh, Kennedy was glamorous. I think he inspired a lot of young people uh, to go into government and into public service. But his legislative record was not all that great, and he was not very good at getting the Congress uh, to move. Uh, Johnson knew which buttons you pushed, and uh, you know he compiled a remarkable uh, civil rights record. I mean, those things would eventually would have happened, I suppose, but probably not as quickly uh, as they did. Teresa Bob Schieffer was 26 at the time. I was 11 years old. I was in the sixth grade at Fortune Grammar Elementary School in my hometown of Lafayette. We were ushered into the gymnasium. A black and white TV set was pushed under the basketball goal, and we watched about the last hour of school, mm -hmm. the coverage. But of all the images from 50 years ago, the, the thing that sticks in my mind the most was the drum cadence as the caisson came down Pennsylvania Avenue with the president's coffin. You'll never forget it. All right. Thanks a lot, Phil. Good piece. Turning to other news tonight on the Crime Watch, a Columbus 